A grand jury in Waller County, Texas, uh, ruled on Monday that no officers will be indicted in connection with the death of Sandra Bland. Now, Sandra Bland, if you can remember, uh, she was actually found inside her jail cell dead on July 13th with a trash bag wrapped around her neck. Now, that's actually three days after the video of her arrest sparked sort of a national outrage against excessive force. Now, if you remember, the video, which was strangely edited, had shown this police officer going up to her car and during a little bit of a verbal altercation during a routine traffic stop, the officer literally pulled her out of the car, threatened to light her up with the taser, and then dragged her off to jail. Now, this was over a, just a small routine traffic stop. Now, Bland's mother, in response to this, had filed a wrongful death suit against county and state officials. Now, um, and this is the state officials uh, that Elsa Magnus and Oscar Prudente showed deliberate indifference to any risk of Bland killing herself inside of her cell. Now get this, the county, Waller County, Texas, the official said, hey, you know, um, yeah, that whole uh, accident, that, that whole accidental death suit, yeah, that's, that's not our fault. That's your fault. According to the county, they responded by blaming her family and friends for refusing to bail her out. Well, you, well, you didn't bail her out. You didn't come all the way down to Texas. Because remember, she had moved all the way to Texas by herself to get a new job. You didn't bail her out soon enough. It's your fault. We didn't do anything, even though it was an arrest for almost no reason. She shouldn't have been in jail in the first place. And now they're, they're blaming her parents, her family. That's ridiculous. Now, the jurors will uh, meet again on January 6th to consider lesser charges, of course, against the state. Um, <clears throat> the grand jury's decision was announced just hours after Bland's family held a press conference in Chicago criticizing what they described as a secretive process. Uh, the mother said, I can't even begin to tell you what's going on because I myself don't know what's going on. To not have my counsel be privy to any of, this, any of this evidence that's being presented to the grand jury. Man, can you imagine? You have this deliberative process and you don't even know what's going on. You don't even go, you don't even know what's going on. You're not allowed in to see the deliberations. That's apparently Texas justice. Now, after this announcement, uh, Bernie Sanders, a uh, Democratic candidate, released a statement saying, quote, Sandra Bland should not have died while in police custody. There's no doubt in my mind that she, like too many African-Americans who die in police custody, uh, custody, would be alive today if she were a white woman. Well, if she were a white person, uh, she probably, I mean, most likely in my opinion at least, wouldn't have been arrested. Now, I realize that's some pretty major speculation, but looking at the systemic injustices in our system that are done to people of color, well, it's, it's more likely than you would actually think. And certainly a lot more likely than we want to believe. Because I think we want to believe down deep that our justice system is fair. We want to believe that. We want to believe that it treats everyone equally. So when we hear about stuff like that, it, it contradicts our longstanding belief that we treat everybody equally in this country. Well, we don't. We have evidence of that. But it contradicts that deep down belief. And a lot of people, unfortunately, they resist that. They say, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's got to be them. It's got to be the victim. It's got to be them. They're not really a victim. They did something wrong, so they belong there. And, and see, it's more prevalent in people that actually haven't experienced this sort of injustice in our justice system. And that's why, as I said, you get victim blaming. I mean, you see a, 
uh, all sorts of people that are saying, well, she should have been respectful to the police. She should have been more respectful, and then she wouldn't have been in that position in the first place. Well, that officer, no, I'm sorry to say, that officer is a public servant. And she only failed to uh, signal for a lane change, right? She only failed to signal for a lane change. Well, if you're a cop, you give her a ticket and move on. Doesn't matter what she's saying. Swearing in an officer, that's not illegal. It's perfectly legal. It's rude, but it's not illegal. Eventually, you'll run into people that are having a bad day. And you think getting a ticket makes your day better? No, it makes your day worse. And of course, you you know you might mouth off. It's not the it's not the best thing to do, but you certainly don't deserve to be dragged out of your car and tased for it, and then thrown in jail. And that's that's what got people so angry about the video in the first place. Just that complete disregard for her rights. Anyway, so. Here's the thing, right? It's, in my opinion, it's up to the officer to be professional. Now, I know dealing with the general public at large ain't easy. It's not easy. But think of all the other jobs that require people to be professional. For example, um, why, you know, why should we expect uh, someone who's working at McDonald's, for, for example, for minimum wage, to sit and smile while somebody berates them? over like a, a cheeseburger we expect that in our society but when it comes to a cop we have a completely different expectation we don't get to say anything we have no rights when we're supposed to have rights see and here's the thing right we should expect more from police especially since they do make more money they have more responsibility, and they actually do provide a, a very, very vital function in society. So why do we have lower standards for cops than you do for minimum wage workers? Why? Now remember, this is the officer that pulled out his taser and said, I'm going to light you up. I'm going to light you up. That's not professional. If you're a policeman, you're a professional. And as long as they're not doing something illegal or physically putting their hands on someone else, I mean, you know, as long as the person that they're talking to or that had a civil infraction, a minor traffic offense, doesn't start getting physical, well, there's no reason that police, uh, that police officer should escalate that situation. But that's unfortunately happens more than what we would like. Now, I'm not saying that all cops are like that. There are plenty of great cops. There are also plenty of bad ones. The bottom line of this whole thing is that, look, if she hadn't been arrested by this guy for overreacting, then she wouldn't be dead in the first place. She wouldn't be dead over a, a minor traffic offense. And I think that if we trained our cops better, this, it comes down to the training. It really comes down to the training. We need to continue to focus on de-escalating situations as well as training our prison staff to treat prisoners more like human beings. And they've done some famous, I, I believe it was the famous standard ex Stanford experiment where one group of students were the jailers, the other group of students were prisoners. And it didn't take long for the people in power to start mistreating those without that power. There needs to be checks on that. Because prisoners, even though they're prisoners, they're still human beings and they still have human rights. If we start doing those things, maybe we can prevent more situations from like this from happening again. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest about this. I don't think we should be holding regular people to a higher standard than we do police. We should be holding the people that we entrust with enforcing the law and protecting the public to a much higher standard than what we have now. Especially since, and this is the reason, it's because we trust them with the power of life and death. And those things 
Those things are not to be taken lightly. 